Hey and welcome to another video. Today I will continue with creating metaballs inside Photoshop. If you haven't seen the previous video, go check it out because I will not be describing as much of the details as I was in the first video. So previously we have used the outer glow effect to like a measure distance between the point and other point on the canvas and based on this we were drawing the metaballs. But we've seen that there are some issues with this solution, mainly because the outer glow effect is not very precise. So today we will use a different approach and that is using the gradients. And before we actually create the metaboss effect, let's talk about the gradients a little bit. I will create a new RGB image and I will draw a linear gradient going from black to white. And if I draw it like this, you would expect that the left side is full black, which is true, it's 000. The right side is full white, it's 255. That's, uh, that's true. That's right. In the middle, it should be half of the 255, which is 128, which kind of is the value which we are getting but things get a little bit different when we move to like a 30 25 percent of the image which should be 64 but it's maybe 50 instead so it's not the each step increment for each uh, pixel on the x-axis is not the same and we can clearly see it when i paste another image and this is the gradient where each step this is the same so this is a gradient where each increment for each pixel is the same and on the bottom is a gradient from Photoshop. So you can see that already some uh, adjustments, some tweakings are happening inside Photoshop. So we have to account for this and keep this in mind. Actually, it will help us to create the meta balls much easier, much quickly. So let's close the document and create a new document which we will use for the actual meta balls. I will make this 800 by 480 make this RGB and immediately we'll start with 16 bits per color because we've seen previously that 8 bits per color is simply not enough to have um, sufficient detail. So this is one document. I will create one more document where I will draw the actual well, gradient and we will use the radial gradient. If I draw it in here going from foreground color which would be black to background uh, to transparent, if I draw it like this it looks nice, but when I try to move it, you can see that it's already cropped because of the boundaries of the document. So I want to create a new document which will be much bigger and in here I will draw a smaller gradient just to make sure that it's not being cropped by the uh, boundaries of the image. So I will again use a 16-bit image, 16-bit per channel and draw a, a small gradient like this. And what I will do is actually draw it not from the foreground to transparent but from from the foreground to background from black to white and the reason for this is i want to apply curves or adjustments to each uh, layer so i need to have it uh, with the background so i will draw a gradient like this maybe and draw uh, drag it inside our document it might be make it a little bit smaller like 90 percent and i can duplicate this you can still only see once because I have to set the blending mode to multiply. If I do, we can see both gradients. And now I will apply the threshold effect to try to draw the uh, meta balls. So if I apply the threshold, you immediately see that we we are seeing something which looks like um, sorry looks like a meta ball effect. You know, right off the bat, we don't have to do anything else. We just need to set the threshold until we are satisfied with the result. And again, this is because the gradient itself has some kind of uh, curves applied or, or gamma value applied. It's not a linear gradient. We can try to simulate the meta balls a little bit more by applying a curves to the gradient itself. So for this gradient, I will apply a curves and I will try to apply this so one divided by X curve like described in the previous video that is make a curve like it's uh, actually flipped uh, compared to the outer glow effect but the idea is the same we should uh, go up as much as we can but not touch the top side not uh, have the flat line like this because we will lose the details so we don't have we cannot touch the top part but but we want to have this point as much on the left side as possible so maybe something around this so I will press the uh, Ctrl Alt G to make sure it's only applied to this layer. I will set this to multiply as well. Sorry, and I will delete those two layers, duplicate one more time, move it to the right side, apply threshold. 
I can try to move this layer closer to the first one. Maybe turn off the extras and of also the snapping just so I can move it freely around. And you can see we have a nice looking blobs or meta balls. Instead of treasure holes, I can also use the levels like we have used previously. The left one would be maybe around 90. The right one should be very close to the left one. So we get this nice looking anti aliased uh, edges. And now what we can do is, sorry, I've duplicated the layer without the curves. So when I want to duplicate the layer, I will have to duplicate the curves. And now we can have as many meta balls as we want. Actually, I don't have to move the curves when I'm moving the meta balls because the curves are applied to the entire layer. Okay, this is looking much nicer than the previous time and it didn't take much time to do here. We are also not limited by the resolution of the image because we don't have the restriction of outer glow effect which could only go up to 250 pixels. We can draw a gradient as big as we want. I can play with those meta balls forever. Maybe next time we can create a small animation out of this. I really like this effect. And that's it. Thanks for watching.